PGCE Research Bytes from the team behind Emma and Tom Talk Teaching. Hello and welcome back to PGCE Research Bytes, a showcase for the best student teacher work from the Cardiff Partnership for Initial Teacher Education. Today, I'm joined by Ben Pepler, who has just completed his PGCE secondary music program here with us. So he's a newly minted, newly qualified secondary music teacher. Hello, Ben. Welcome. Hello. How are you doing? I'm all right. And I enjoyed reading your recent piece of research, um, which you handed in as your second assignment. So can you explain to us what the topic was that you picked? Because you could pick anything for this assignment. So you, you landed on a topic and why it was that you, you wanted to find out more about it. Absolutely. So it was quite a specific topic, very, very subject specific. Um, so apologies, any non non music uh, listeners, but um, yeah, it kind of it was born out of um, being given full control of a year ten GCSE class for my second placement. I had kind of full remit to uh, plan a scheme of work and deliver it based on the GCSE spec. Um, and at the same time, I actually read my mentor's dissertation. Uh, it was kind of to get an idea of how he taught, how research influenced his teaching as well. Um, and it really highlighted an issue where appraising, which is one of the three exams you do in GCSE music, the attainment nationally is far, far lower. Uh, and it kind of stood out to me. I, I thought, what, what on earth's going on here? Where there's an exam which is consistently much, much poorer and has a kind of consistent low average grade. Um, so I took a deep dive really into the specification of the GCSE. Um, I also had a look at Music in the National Curriculum, which is the document for uh, music in Wales. Um, and a kind of key text that was highlighted in that dissertation and generally in the music world is A Basis for Music Education by uh, Keith Swanwick. Um, so I really kind of started to look at those, the two first documents, the specification and the national curriculum through the lens of that Keith Swanwick work. Um, so the topic I settled on was how can attainment be improved in the appraising section of the WJC GCSE music exam through the integrated approach, which is set out in both that spec and it's set out in the Swanwick. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a massive vote of confidence from your mentor, first of all, isn't it? To give you his his year 10 GCSE music class, just full control of it. So, you know, massive hats off to your mentor. And yeah, it's a funny one, isn't it? So so for anybody who's watching this, who's not familiar with music, um, it's, it's conceived as a subject as having three kind of bits, isn't it? Performing, um, composing, so making up your own music, appraising, which is sort of listening to and responding to music critically. And the idea is those are supposed to be holistic, you know, they're not supposed to be separate bits. But then when you get to GCSE, they are separately assessed, aren't they? And, and yeah, I remember this from my days in the classroom that the pupils will tend to do spectacularly well in performing and spectacularly badly comparatively in the appraising, which comes in the form of a, of a listening exam with a, with a CD. And yet it's, it's been a well-known problem. And, and so what you're saying is that, that you, were, you were looking at taking that holistic approach where composing, performing, appraising happen all at the same time, like we do at Key Stage 3. But we tend to, we tend to ditch that a little bit at GCSE, don't we? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what I noticed was that the things we're asking of the students are slightly different, specifically in that appraising section. Uh, so Swanwick, although he does have composing, kind of appraising, we'll come back to that, and performing. Composing and performing are very much established. His schema's actually got five different skills rather than those three. So he's got the, the CLASP schema, which is composing, literature studies, uh, audition, uh, skill acquisition, and performing. So... Audition is kind of similar to appraising. It's a lot more kind of um, uh, core. It's, it's about really listening to the music and interpreting it. Um, literature studies is the literature of music uh, and about music. And then skill acquisition is uh, gaining skills in things like oral, instrumental and notational skills. Um, so those three, literature studies, audition and skill acquisition, all kind of pertain to that appraising section. Uh, but my argument be that they aren't equally represented uh, across the board. So what I did was went through all of the assessment objectives in GCSE Music, as well as all of the kind of bullet points of the national curriculum. Um, and I kind of 
worked out which section it would go into of that schema. So in GCSE, there was 20% of the whole GCSE was literature studies, um, which was actually two out of three of the assessment objectives of the appraising exam. And comparing that with the music in the national curriculum, I found that there was literally no literature studies. So my kind of assumption from that and what I thought was maybe the issue was that literature studies has suddenly dropped in on students and it's a skill that maybe it is using other subjects, but within the kind of world of music, they're not applying that skill until they get to Key Stage 4. And that's interesting, isn't it? Because I think as music teachers, we've always had a bit of a sense that the transition from Key Stage 3 to GCSE is not always a smooth one. It doesn't always feel like it quite joins together in a logical way. But to actually find a way to, to kind of get that down on paper so we can see where the problem lies. That was a really, really interesting piece of work for me that, that you, you nailed where the issue was really. So what, what did you do once you'd identified that problem? So um, I made a few recommendations and I, I really kind of went into even some of the psychological um, aspects of how to improve that literature studies element for Key Stage 4 students. Um, so I kind of I had a a dip into that field of research. I, I'm no expert in that kind of reading, uh, but two big texts that really influenced my um, recommendations were Improving Students' Long-Term Knowledge Retention Through Personalised Review, which is by Lindsay, Schroyer, Paschler and Moser, and then Work in Memory and Overview by Badley. Um, those two, they kind of have two different uh, theories that I, I combined together. So the review, paper by Lindsay Schroyer, Pashley and Moser um, really talks about revisiting topics um, frequently, but in a personalized way. So you can really see, ideally for every single student, what needs to be revisited and revisit that in an appropriate way. And the way they did that, they kind of went through different tests where they gave students new information, revisited at different intervals. So some of it was consistent intervals where every lesson they revisited more and more and ended up by the final lesson basically just revising the whole way through all the topics. There was somewhere it was more kind of incremental and gradually built up. And the ones they found were really, really effective were personalized and based on small scale assessment where they could really pick out those individual things. The other one was working memory. And the big kind of oversimplified take that I really took from it was that information, if it's been put into that real long-term memory often needs to be orally processed. Massive oversimplification. And there are lots of complicated terms and that kind of thing in there that um, explained it all. But for me as a music teacher, I really took that it needs to be processed orally. And I think a lot of the time with those literature studies aspects of the appraising exam, say what year was when each dad's composed, those little facts that we have to know are easily kind of handed out on a worksheet a lot of the time in the classroom. They're not necessarily thoughtfully done maybe because there's not many of them. There's not actually that many facts that you need to know. Uh, maybe because it's just when music teachers, we don't know what to do with it. But finding that inventive way to ensure that students already process uh, what you're saying uh, really, really helped. So that, that helped me make my three recommendations. It's funny actually, isn't it? Because cognitive science, we're hearing a lot more about it at the moment. Um, and I, I think there's perhaps a tendency for those of us in the, the, the performing related kind of creative subjects to look at that and think, oh, that's, that's for those content rich subjects over there. That's for the ones that are all about the knowledge. That's, I, that's got not as much to say for me, but you found that there was actually an application there. And I mean, you mentioned earlier that you, you were given the keys to this class uh, and allowed to look after them for, for the, the term of your placement. So did that mean you were able to try some things out with them? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I, I basically, I made three recommendations to myself based on this research and then implemented it into a scheme of work, um, which went across that term. Uh, unfortunately, because of COVID, we couldn't do any performing. Uh, so it was an integrated approach to composing and appraising. Um, and the lessons were divided into those two disciplines, but there was lots and lots of crossover. Um, so the three recommendations I made to myself um, was that the integrated approach could work, but I need to be really cautious uh, because there's some issues where you could easily dilute each subject way too much um, and you could end up having lots of different integrated things that the students don't really connect to the exam at all. Um, 
So that was my first recommendation. The second one was I need to identify what needs to be learnt and ideally teach it in a non-visual way. Um, so avoiding things like worksheets too often, avoiding things like PowerPoints all the time. They do have their place, absolutely, but making sure that it's not a purely visual prompt, especially for those fact-based things. And then finally, to revise the information regularly, listening to learners in order to personalize the schedule of review, okay? Which is quite a tricky one really to implement, especially as a kind of novice teacher, where really gauging that knowledge is uh, is really, really tricky. Um, so yeah, those are my three recommendations. I'll talk a bit later about how they, I kind of achieved against those. The way I did it, um, it was a scheme of work based on the Nietzsche's dance, um, which is the set of work, uh, one of the set of works for the GCSE exam. So the appraising side was very much focused on that. That was my first topic that I picked. I then thought about composing and how I could teach that through composing. And I found that the best kind of link on the composing side was film music, which there's often a brief, which is film music based, uh, really focusing in on light motif, uh, using that as a way to reference Anitra's dance, things like the Romantic Era, those kind of connections where light motif really fits across, uh, but also using that composing to revise things like the basic elements of music, cadences, musical devices. There was a real massive scope for those kind of knowledge-based things they need to apply in their appraising exam, that if they're doing that themselves to a composition, uh, was really, really helpful and effective. That's interesting. I mean, I'm thinking, thinking a little bit more widely now, because I know you, you said, you know, apologies to the music, non-music people watching this, but actually here in Wales, we are grappling with trying to integrate or how much we should integrate multiple subject disciplines into areas of learning and experience. And I'm just thinking off the top of my head here that those recommendations that you make could potentially form the basis for, for a kind of school of thought about how we do that, because I think you managed to identify traps in that very specific area. Um, but a lot of that would be very much applicable to our colleagues from elsewhere, I think. So um, what was the impact then? What, what, what was your success against your recommendations? So, so what I found was that um, the engagement was really, really good. That was kind of an immediate thing for me. And it was an engagement from not necessarily the students you'd expect, kind of your math students and that kind of thing. It was across the class, engagement was great. And the tasks I could make more simple because they were based in this oral, they were kind of quite simple and cross-curricular or cross-disciplinary in this case. Um, so all students could really engage and every single student in the class I knew had achieved this thing. And to achieve those learning objectives, which I had in composition, meant they had to have an understanding of an appraising aspect. And that's so I don't think I'd be able to teach in an appraising pure lesson where it's more lecture-based. I don't think I'd be able to ensure that each of those specific students would have clicked and got it. Um, so that was really great. It was a great indicator of where it was working, which was really, really helpful. Um, so entertainment seemed to go up. Um, from the additional two recommend recommendations I make, um, you can tell that that kind of assessment is a core concept that I'd want to improve a little bit and to get this kind of personalized review schedule going. Um, the main challenge is that assessment of students and it, cause it needs to be personalized. I had 22 students in that class. So doing that for each individual student was really challenging. So I used things like uh, Kahoot, which is the online quiz game, which they absolutely loved. Um, I used questioning. I used that similar thing with composition where I could see exactly what they'd done. And that was a really nice indicator of how far they were. Uh, but getting that kind of personalized review was an area where I thought I could do with some additional help. Uh, so my additional recommendations both came over that kind of revision review topic. Um, so the first one was to spend time at the start of the scheme of work measuring student understanding of core concepts, which was something I, I'm not going to beat myself up too much about it because I was in a brand new school, brand new class. Uh, but making sure that they understand core things is really important. And especially in music, there's so much knowledge that's built on other knowledge that if something's missing right at the start, right at the foundation, it all kind of collapses. And it's it's more, I was surprised by how common it was for basic things not to be understood. And they've just always said, oh yes, 40 means loud kind of thing. So it's, yeah, that was really, really key. 
Uh, the other thing was to regularly assess students' understanding and facilitate the learning to account for weaknesses. So where I could see how everyone was doing, and I could see that most students were kind of almost forced to understand these things, to get through these topics, measuring that understanding and accounting for it in my teaching was the biggest challenge that I found. Um, I think it's something that maybe a more experienced teacher would be able to do quite intuitively, quite naturally, it's probably already doing. Um, but assessing each student individually and facilitating that learning around what they know would really take it to the next level from what I could tell. So that's, I guess that's what we're aiming for next year in my teaching. Yeah, well, next year you've got a job. Uh, you're becoming a newly qualified teacher, entering the teaching profession. So I'm sort of wondering now, I mean, the work that you've done here, the specific work that you've done here will absolutely serve you in, in your new school, no matter, I guess, which GCSE specification you choose, because you're, you're going over to work in England, so you'll have a little bit more choice. So I'm thinking a little bit more widely. You've You've spent the year engaged in research, doing assignments, having time for research and inquiry. Obviously, the opportunities to do that may be slightly less next year because you'll be doing a lot more teaching as a newly qualified teacher. But I'm just curious to kind of see how you, you see those principles of research and inquiry potentially still being useful to you in the future. Yeah, I, I massively do. And this is something as someone who's come into a PGC as an absolute non-academic. I do have degrees, so I could go on to the PGCE, but they're very specific music-based uh, conservatoire degrees, and they're very much practical. I think in my last year of my undergrad, I wrote about 300 words, so I absolutely avoided writing wherever possible. I'm not a very essay-based person, but I found that research has massively impacted my teaching, um, and I found that research doesn't have to be super complicated in-depth reading. Uh, for example, recently I've been watching a lot of uh, YouTube videos of Bill Rogers, behaviour management stuff, which has been great. Uh, books like Teaching Walkthroughs by Tom Sherrington. So those really, really simple, quick information uploads that you can get, where you can sit down for half an hour, watch something specific, and then try it out in your teaching. It's something I want to take forward permanently, really, and keep, keep doing, because each time I've done that, it's worked in some way, or it hasn't worked in some way, where it's really influenced it. I've never done that across my whole PGCE and thought that was a complete waste of time. It's always been really, really useful and kind of opened my eyes to different ways of uh, approaching things. Well, a load of really good recommendations there, even for our non-subject specific viewers. So thank you very much, Ben, for coming in and, and sharing your work with us. We hope you found that useful and we'll be back with more Research Bites at some point in the future. Bye for now.